So finally, to the solution then. Now, again, by using this, this was just a device to form a set of three first order ordinary differential equations. I'm not suggesting that in general, if you wanted to solve this, you would resort to linear algebra. Those techniques that we've gone through are the techniques that would apply to any set of first order differential equations. Not the simple set that you get from this one, where the three functions, not those three, the three functions are simply related by being the derivatives of each other. This is here just as a check, because I know that the answer to this is... This. And this is just here so that I can check the answer to the set of equations. Well, what did we have? The way this worked was, you took this equation, and by using these substitutions, z1 is y, z2 is y dashed, and z3 is y double dashed, the second derivative. By going through derivatives of those, you formed a set of a linear system of first order differential equations, which had this form, z dashed equals az plus f. Diagonalizing a to p d inverse of p z plus f let you carry a substitution by first of all pre-multiplying by the inverse of p oops and then carrying out the substitution w equals inverse of p times z you ended up with this set w dashed equals d w plus this then turned into some other vector of functions and that readily decoupled them into the three separate linear differential equations first order equations which had those three as the solution so now you're ready just to undo that if you multiply by p and you'll have z equals p w get back to z which will have the one two three as its components that was p times w and the vector p was so it'll be that times this here like that means i'll have and i'll just split this back out to z1 z2 z3 now would be now it's just the tedious case of going through all these little fractions. Remember, that those are single entries. That's not a big matrix. That matrix is just a three by one matrix. Those are just the different terms in that first element. So it'll be one of those, one of those, one of those. So I'll do it term by term. So for x squared, I'd have negative a quarter plus a tenth minus a sixtieth, which adds up to negative a sixth. X squared, one of them, one of them, one of them. A half minus a tenth minus a ninetieth is seven eighteenths. Yes, I brought these out already. One of them, one of them, one of them. Negative a half plus a twentieth minus one two seventieth is minus forty nine over one hundred eight. And then one of them, one of them, one of them is plus c one e to the negative x plus c two e to the negative two x plus c three e to the three x. That's z one. Now, in this trivial case where this system came from that one equation, now of course that virtually is the only solution. Z one was y. So the solution should be this, and there it is. It's exactly the same thing. Which means that when I go through this to get z2, z2 was the derivative. z2 should be the derivative of this. So when you go through the same operation of negative one of those, negative two of those, but plus three of those, then for x squared, when you do a quarter plus four tenths minus nine sixtieths, it comes to, oh, it comes to zero. When you go through the x terms and do negative one of those, minus two of those, and then three of those, that comes to negative a third. How do you do these terms at the end? We have negative one of those, and negative two, and three of those. That turns out to be seven eighteenths. And then I'll have negative c1 e to the negative x, minus two c2 e to the negative two x, and then plus three c3 e to the three x. Now, if that's the solution to z2, z2 should have been y dash, so that means der the derivative of that line should be that line, and it is. That should disappear, so I'm left with seven eighteenths and negative a third x. Z3, same again, it's going to be one of them, four of them, and nine of them. When you carry that out, that comes to zero for the x squared. Similarly, if you work this out, a half and minus four tenths and minus nine ninetieths, that comes to zero lots of x. And then negative a half plus four twentieths minus nine over two seventy comes to negative a third. And this part would be plus c1 e to negative x, plus four c2 e to negative two x, and plus nine c3 e to the three x, which is, of course, the derivative of that one. 
Z3 was the second derivative. Differentiating that does in fact give you this. So if it was a set of three first order differential equations, those would be the solutions to them. It was simplified in this case because those were interrelated in that they were the derivatives of each other. That's why it was easy to check the answer against that. So there's the technique then.